was there. Yeah, man. so it was it was really cool to reunite um, with him and, and uh, thank and him again mic. for <laughs> starting that open mic. Are yeah. you guys still based in Texas? Well, we we actually uh, we got a place in South Louisiana recently for just before the pandemic. And uh, so we're, we're based out of there, but we're on the road uh, probably half the year. We're, we're not sure how long yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we can be. And yeah. you've been making the Colorado circuit around here. You just played a society hall down in Alamosa recently. Yeah. Yeah, and then Ure uh, on Tuesday. Uh, on beautiful uh, rooftop of the Citizens Bank that was put on by the Sherbino Theater. Oh, my God. Ridgeway. Yeah, that was a wonderful show. Um, you played the rooftop there in Ridgeway. It was hard to, to oh keep my to keep concentration on. Yeah, what you we kept were getting doing. distracted <laughs> by the by the beautiful view. <laughs> oh man, I love Ridgeway. I used to have some property there anyway. It's mm. a long story. The attorney got it. Oh, you know, oh. Before, so anyway, LP's happy. So <laughs> seem fair. Oh, it does. You know, it's like <laughs> uh, the, the common joke. You know, why the divorce is so expensive? Mm. Because it's worth it. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got this. I got my daughter, so anyway, so it's all good. Welcome, Andy. Uh, boy, what kind of what kind of questions do I need to ask you guys? Well, well we can start with a, a song, maybe. Yeah, I think let you think. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll start out with one I, I wrote for my mom.
Listeners, if you're into live streaming, go to Cahen's Facebook page, and we're live streaming this. Of course, if you're listening, yeah, smile at the audience. Hey. Man, I was reading on your bio, I love, keep kind all that rises from your chest to your tongue. Don't ever let your words do undo the work you've done. I love that, Crystal. I so resonate with that, being careful with your words. And, and part of my mantra is be kind, be grateful, and Make somebody smile today. That's part of the mantra of my show, and that fits in so well. Yeah, there's a, a lyric from one of our one of our songs on our, on our last album. Is that the album's honest? Yeah, exactly. And you guys are going to be selling your. Do you have any CDs for sale or sure do. or downloads? Yeah, we have. The, I mean, yeah, people can can download them for sure, but we do have physical. I think CDs. that's the new way to do everything. But I'm old but we, fashioned. We, we still love your CDs. I, I still I still have the hard copy of CDs. Yeah. We do too. It's they got a them. nice lyric booklet in them. Yeah. Beautiful artwork in both of them. Yeah. So I think people still appreciate that somehow. <laughs> I sure do. The people who have CD players in their cars. <laughs> I made the mistake it's of rare. getting rid of all my LPs when CDs oh, became no. vogue and donating them to a friend and stuff. I guess that's all right, you know. But now that they've made a comeback, it's like, well, you know. Anyway, at least they're getting some use, right? <laughs> Unless your friend sold them. <laughs> Maybe in a roundabout way, they're, they're still getting them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Are you all selling vinyl nowadays? Or? We haven't pulled the plug. Uh, pulled the plug. It's early for us. Well, it's not early now, <laughs> but we had to get up early to get over here at this time. So. For, for us. We are so not morning people are, in general. Did you all drive in? Was yeah, it the we, spring? We, we, yeah, yeah. Colorado spring. Yeah, so it was yeah. a couple of hours. Woke up at seven, which is early for us. That's early. for music for <laughs> musicians. That's a that's like three for normal people. I think. Yeah, our dogs had no idea. They were like, "What are you doing? Why are you, why are you <laughs> around? Life on the road again, <laughs> Bob and Doug." Yeah, but uh, no, we we hadn't gotten any vinyl yet. Um, hopefully, with the next record, we'll be able to at least do like a a, a limited edition pre-sale run of, of vinyl. I think that's that's pretty likely. Yeah. I mean, it's lugging them, uh, them around and right, for making sure they don't melt sense. in the heat <laughs> that really worries us. Yeah. What year did you guys finally start touring? Well, after? it's that's a, a more complicated question mm -hmm. than you realize because <laughs> uh, we've, we've come into this really slowly and um, it, initially we started traveling in an RV as a lifestyle um, back in 2014. We, we sold our house in Houston and bought an RV and got rid of all our stuff and just took off with our four dogs. And um, we, we played, you know, not too many shows. Um, we were playing a little bit and we had some songs, but it wasn't, it wasn't the and main we, thing. We started hitting a lot of open mics and trying yeah. to get familiar with the different music scenes around the country and then just getting, getting to know people in different areas. Yeah, just it, trying to connect with people. Yeah. And and it re like that, doing that. You know, our our goal was not to to go on the road and be full time musicians. Like like that would be amazing, but we didn't ever think that that was doable. It just was. It didn't seem like a a, a thing that we could we could do. It didn't and seem like it was in the cards. Right. And so, yeah. but it it allowed us. You know, from leaving our job, especially for me, I had a, a lot of. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to to delve into my creative side once I got into the other work and leaving that job and starting to live on the road full time it, it allowed us to to hit to get back into that creative side and it's like, hey wait, this is this is what feels like home, you know, what feels like what we're supposed to be doing. And it just gave us more time to start start playing out and it just was a gradual thing. It yeah. just kinda grew organically um, and felt right until we pushed into a new and, and, and reading your bio, you guys got some pretty much some success and a lot of awards from doing different festivals and, and such and such. Then the pandemic hit. What did you guys do besides hunker down in, in Louisiana? Right. Yeah. yeah, we, I mean, it was hard to know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it was, it was hard to, 
uh, feel like you're doing the right thing even. But uh, we wrote some songs, and uh, I worked on my mandolin playing, and we worked on the house, and we started building a band, and um, tried to rest a little bit. Not, Try to not worry learn too what much. that was. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's a it's a blur. <laughs> did you got, did you build your up the inside of your van? And we're everything? we're about sixty percent done. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, the people yeah we're that, driving around in a contru- construction yeah. zone. <laughs> my, my friends Will and Laurel they're building a van. Oh, cool! And uh, he's doing he he raised the roof on his van and doing the fiberglass and everything. Whoa. And I was wondering wow. if you got any hints from him and Laurel on that. No, I don't know them. No, that's Laurel. Uh, that's oh, Laurel. Oh, they're the oh, ones. Yeah. That, they're the ones introduced me to you <laughs> yeah, guys. That's right. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna. Yeah, we, she hang out with she them mentioned tonight. that in an email one time. I was like, oh, that's that's them. I mean, we cut holes <laughs> in our van to like put windows and the, the vents and stuff. But I wouldn't them. trust anything I added. Added to right. That's a whole <laughs> other level. They are they are brave brave souls. <laughs> I can't wait to see their van. Did you guys get started in music like at an early age? Did your parents start you buying a guitar, or did you get involved in school music? Or I think we both were involved in school music, though not too yeah. seriously. I got in middle school band. I did, you know, well, I took piano lessons, and then I played flute in middle, middle school band, but nothing. I was more of a writer. Was actually what I did. That was my my outlet. You know, it wasn't until I graduated high school that I got a guitar. I was like, oh, I think. I think these these things, these thoughts, maybe want to be songs. And, and being able to write music and poetry and stuff like that, boy, that really evolves into good songwriting and and all of that involved. Yeah, yeah. I, but he started early. I started right? in sixth grade on guitar and uh, took lessons. I was I was fortunate to have parents who would who forked over the cash to give me lessons out of the just to keep you from playing the drums. I know yeah. that's true. <laughs> I wanted to play drums. And, uh, the parents' worst nightmare is get to use a drum set. Uh-huh. <laughs> it would have been fine, but it's also fine. I'm glad. I'm just glad to, to have had that and, and been able to, uh, to have that foundation for, for playing music uh, for hopefully a lifetime. You guys have brought in a slew of instruments. What kind of guitar are you playing, Pete? Yeah, this is, I was playing a banjo for the last song, and the, I just picked up an octave mandolin which looks like a guitar. It's got a guitar-shaped body, but it's got eight strings that are um, paired in uh, four, four pairs of two <laughs> strings. And it's a whole octave lower than a mandolin. Um, if your listeners are familiar with the mandolin, um, this is a whole octave lower. Actually, I've got a capo on, but, uh, <laughs> it's, an echo. but it, it's more in a guitar range. violent range. You want to play a song with this? Sure, yeah. Please do. Cool. Yeah, we got a, a newer song. But like we were mentioning earlier, we uh, we met at that open mic. And yeah, that was really cool to play that show last night to be reunited with our, our friend who started that.
reading about your album, Honest, and stuff, the opener I come from, it looks back at the things that are upbringing that are worth keeping. And then the, the more sober scars we keep, on the other hand, tosses out the things that we must cast aside. And Crystal sings, these times are hard and it's harder to heal. When where you were born decides what you fear. It's time to be a brother, not my father's son. I was born to be a bigot, but that doesn't mean that I am one. That really resonates with me. Mm. It, it was really deep and stuff. And, you know, how we were raised and stuff. Yeah, yeah. growing up in the South, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's still, it's yeah. still heavy. It's in still in there. Oklahoma, it and still is too. And it's, it's like, it's eye opening and how we've evolved and stuff. And anyway. What a great album. Thank you. And detangling tradition from any particular negative aspect is complicated and sometimes impossible, but it's necessary to change tr the tradition for it to live on and hopefully preserve its core as our culture tries to correct its failings. I love these words. It's like, man. Thank you. And growing up in the South, like, man. Where are you guys going next after the Coldale show? We're heading to Loveland on Saturday, and then Glenwood Springs on, on Sunday. Excellent. And then Estes Park. And then Estes Park. Um, Man, what a beautiful Friday. tour you're going. Yeah. There. We, uh, it'll be, we, we love being in Colorado, and, and uh, so far Colorado's been really good to us. Loving, loving being here. You want to play Scars? Sure, yeah, we'll, we'll play the song we were just talking about. Thank you very much. Transmission. Yeah, and this is one that is, it is neither of our personal stories, but um, it's, you know, that's what I love about song, is that you can embody someone else's story and, and try to learn from it.
new song. About the lyrics is, guys, you're in for a treat tonight. Cold ale, seven o'clock, get there. It's these guys are world class musicians. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank um, you so much. I noticed that some of these the songs, boy, the words and everything, they can really heal a lot of past wounds and stuff. And music, I've always felt, can heal a lot. And it's very, it, it's very uh, medicinal to me. Music makes me happy. That's why I'm doing what I do. Yeah, it, it definitely is. You know, I mean, even even sad songs can make you happy in a way. You know, just it, to be moved by something. And we both are so can so easily be moved by by music that that reaches places that um, it's hard to reach any other way. Boy, that last song was bringing tears to my eyes. I apologize. No, no, no. no we, that's why we do it. Yeah. We're, we're oh, to see great. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's, yeah. That's, that's, I mean. It's a good thing I have a face for radio. Yeah. Oh, I'm on live stream. They can see me. Later. That's right. Um, <laughs> well, well, yeah, when, it, when, when you can move someone with the song, that, that that's really what it's all about for us. Yeah. Because um, when you're, you're moved, you feel connected. Yeah. And certainly there's a place for, for all kinds of music and music that, that makes you smile and, uh, and maybe ours does sometimes too <laughs> but, uh, but but we definitely uh, work towards that you know the, the lyrics that, that really uh, connect with people did you guys write any pandemic songs while you're in when you're hunkered down for two years funny you ask funny you ask <laughs> song we were about to play yeah we were gonna um, we were gonna leave y'all with this this one um, this is the, the first song that we wrote after the start of the pandemic, you know, it's like you said, music can be healing, and from from my own self, you know, that's how I, I often work through things is through songs. And, um, this is my my way of doing that. I think this will be our our, our last song here on the air, but we, we hope to see y'all out there uh, tonight at Cold Ale Schoolhouse. And thank you so much for having us on the air. Oh, uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for coming in. I can't wait for tonight's show. You guys are in for a treat. It's 17 miles down the, the canyon. 30 minutes, you're there.
Thank you. Ordinary Elephant, guys. It's Pete and Crystal Damore tonight at the Coaldale Schoolhouse. Thank you guys for coming in. Thank you so, so much for spending you. time. Yeah. Yeah. I can't fun. wait for tonight. Mm -hmm. The dogs can't either. <laughs> the dogs are so well behaved. They've, they've been sleeping on my feet down here to keep my feet warm. So, uh, They're good at that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all my listeners and underwriters for allowing me to do what I do. And thank you. Uh, next week on the River Flow Live, I have Julia Rose Studios doing a live play interview at 11 o'clock.